This is the iPhone SE 2022 third generation disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, on the bottom of the frame, there are two pentalope screws that need to be removed. Once those screws are removed, we need to apply heat to the front of the screen to loosen up the adhesive around the frame. And then a suction cup tool needs to be used to help gently lift the screen up and gain leverage so we can get a plastic pry tool in and work our way around prying off the screen. Now the screen needs to be lifted up from the left to the right. There are seven Phillips screws that need to be removed. Once the screws have been removed, the metal plates can be removed as well. Now the flex cable for the battery can be disconnected. Once the battery has been disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. In order to remove the battery, there are two adhesive pull tabs on the top, which have to be pulled to release the adhesive underneath the battery so the battery can be removed. There are two more adhesive pull tabs on the bottom of the battery. Regardless, I never seem to have any luck with those pull tabs, so I'm going to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 2018 mAh battery. Now the 2020 second generation iPhone SE looks almost identical both internally and externally to the iPhone SE 2022 third generation but not 100%. The text or imprint on the coverings look different, as well as the fact that the 2022 Generation 3 battery looks slightly thinner than that of the one in the 2020 SE. On the bottom portion of the battery where the chips or components of the battery, as well as the flex cable are, seem to be a bit thinner on the iPhone 2022 SE, possibly giving it a slightly longer battery cell. Now as for the question if the iPhone 2022 SE battery would work in the iPhone 2020, the answer to that would be no. Size-wise, yes, it would fit in the compartment. However, yet again, Apple has changed the connector very slightly. So the connector on the 2022 SE battery would not fit with the connector on the 2020 SE. Here's a closer look at those connectors. Here's a look at them side by side. Another difference we can see, the main board on the 2022 SE is slightly longer compared to the one on the 2020 SE. The bottom portion of the motherboard comes down slightly longer as well as the plastic piece on the speaker assembly on the bottom. For the 2020, it's slightly longer on the top compared to the plastic on the speaker on the 2022. Now, as far as replacing the screen from the 2020 to the 2022, the connectors fit perfectly fine and the screen turns on and the display works fine. However, the touch doesn't work properly. Sometimes it will detect a touch and sometimes it doesn't. Now physically between the two screens, there are a few more differences. One being the layout of the graphite film on the back which helps transfer heat. And the second thing I could see is that on the 2020 iPhone SE, the second generation one, there's a one piece metal plate on the back and the graphite film is actually on that metal plate. Compared to the 2022 third generation one where there's a metal plate on the bottom and a separate metal plate on the top and there's nothing in the middle. So on the 2022, the graphite film is attached directly to the back of the screen. And when looking at it from the side, these two screw holes on the frame are empty, since there's no metal plate on the back right there, compared to the one on the back of the 2020, where these two screws are in place, holding the back of the mid plate in the mid section. The same goes for the other side where there's a screw missing over here on the 2022, compared to the 2020. So from the looks of it, you wouldn't be able to swap the parts between the 2020 and the 2022. So now let's continue with the disassembly. There are six Phillips screws and seven tri-point screws that need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we can begin to remove the covers. The flex cables for the screen are adhered to this bottom plate. 
So if we need to replace this, we'd have to heat it up and pry that plate off. The flex cable for the home button is connected here. And that cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. And the home button can be removed by pushing it in and removing it. Here's a better look at the front facing camera, the top ear speaker, and the proximity flex. And this entire flex cable assembly is held on with adhesive, so if you need to replace that, you'd have to just gently pry it off. Now back to the main board, we're going to proceed to disconnect some more flex cables. There's a standoff screw and a Phillips screw, which are holding down the cover that's covering the main camera that need to be removed. Here's a better look at the 12 megapixel wide camera. And this camera has OIS or optical image stabilization. There are seven more Phillips screws and two more standoff screws that need to be removed. Two more flex cables need to be disconnected. As well as two more Phillips screws. There are two more Phillips screws on the inside of the frame that need to be removed. Now this flex cable can be removed. As well as the antenna flex cable on the top right side. At this point, there's one more standoff screw that needs to be removed. Once this rubber gasket is peeled off, there's a Phillips screw underneath that needs to be removed. Now finally, after all the screws are removed, the main board can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the main board. There are rubber gaskets around the connectors, a liquid damage indicator, which is a white sticker over here on top, and graphite film over the shields to help transfer heat. When the graphite film on the front is peeled back, there's nothing visible underneath since the shield is covered and soldered to the main board. There's more graphite film on the back shields. Here's a better look with the graphite film on the back removed. Once the main board has been removed, we can see the wireless charging coil in the center, covered with graphite film to help transfer heat, as well as some more graphite film which lays underneath the motherboard. There are nine more Phillips screws on the bottom that need to be removed, as well as one tri-point screw. There's a flex cable between the taptic feedback motor and the speaker assembly that needs to be disconnected and the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. There's a mesh filter inside the speaker assembly opening. And here's a look at the bottom. This plastic cover can be removed. There's a standoff screw, and then there are three more Phillips screws that need to be removed. Two of the Phillips screws are on the inside of the frame on either side of the charger port. Once the flex cable is lifted up, the flex cable for the taptic feedback motor underneath can be disconnected. Here's a better look at the taptic engine. Now the two microphones on the bottom need to be separated from the frame and they're held on with some adhesive. And then the charger port flex cable can be peeled off. The charger port is located in the center, and the two microphones are located on either side. Here's a look at the other side of it. The toggle key for putting the phone in silent mode, the volume keys, the flash, the secondary microphone, and the power key are all attached to this one flex cable which connects to the main board with this connector. So if you needed to replace either of those, you'd have to remove the Phillips screws which are holding the metal brackets on the inside of the frame, which are covering the flex cables and holding the keys in place and then you'd be able to peel off this flex cable and replace it. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together.
Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the screen. Power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.